Hey, hope you're having a great day so far. Today is January 21st, Thursday, and on this post, I'll be telling you about the overall crypto markets, which includes Bitcoin dominance and Bitcoin price action, before diving into Polkadot and Chainlink, DOT and LINK USD, and see what exactly are going on in these two markets. I'll be telling you about the bullish and bearish case scenarios for today, as well as the short-term price prediction, prediction on these markets, according to what I'm seeing on the charts. Before I begin today, if you guys are watching me on YouTube, do subscribe. If you guys are watching me on TradingView, do follow me as I'll be keeping you updated on the latest crypto setups on my watch list, regardless if it's a good day or a bad day. If you guys do want to support me and don't already have a Weibo brokerage account, you guys can use my referral link down below. They're still giving away four free stocks as of today upon a successful sign-up and a qualifying deposit, and I will also receive a referral bonus if you guys sign up under me. Please do also read my full disclaimer below. I am not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. I'm purely sharing my own speculation opinions on this market. I cannot tell you the future, and you should always do your own due diligence before trading or investing in this market, as it's extremely risky and volatile. If you guys have any questions or comments, please do only leave them in the comment section below. But I'll try my best to get you as many of them as possible. Let's see what exactly is going on in the markets first. Needless to say that there was a dump in the Bitcoin markets earlier today and even last night. So this has dragged quite a bit of the altcoins down with it. Let's visit Bitcoin dominance for priority sake. Tells me what the money could be trending into. Would it be Bitcoin or altcoins or neither? Currently, Bitcoin dominance is down about 30%, point 30, uh, 0.30%. Okay. So as I've been saying, when Bitcoin dominance is trending downwards, it's generally speaking better for trading altcoins. And this goes for even on the downside because Bitcoin dominance is down about 0.3%. Bitcoin price action down over 13%. Total altcoin market cap only down less than Bitcoin price action. So because Bitcoin dominance is not really down that much, total altcoin market cap is down just trailing Bitcoin price action, okay? So obviously if Bitcoin dominance was down about 5%, I would expect total altcoin market cap to be down a lot less. Just think about it mathematically. Now on the three-day time frame, this is still what I'm looking for on Bitcoin dominance because it has just breached the 200 MA on the three-day time frame. If price action closes, which closes about two hours for the three-day candle here, I would expect the Bitcoin dominance price action to continue downwards. However, there's going to be some important key levels down here as well, including this FIB level right here if we actually zoom out. And the weekly moving averages are going to be down there at about the 63.85% area that's going to be acting as support. So let's see if Bitcoin dominance actually bounces from there. If it does, I would say it's going to, it's going to be a lot worse for the altcoins if Bitcoin dominance trends back upwards and when Bitcoin price action actually dumps again. Now let's take a look into Bitcoin price action. Bitcoin price action has been dumping since about earlier today and even last night, depending on where you are. Came down from about 36,000 to all the way about now, which is about almost 30K here. So almost a 20% dump, okay. If Bitcoin dominance was actually trending upwards, I would expect a, a lot more severe loss, depending on the number and the magnitude of Bitcoin dominance, of course, but I would expect a much bigger loss if Bitcoin dominance was actually trending way up while Bitcoin price action is dumping. Now, what do I expect a possible bounce from here? Okay, as I've been saying yesterday, if the price action actually breaks the 12 hour 50 moving average right here, which it has, the next key support I'm looking at would be the 50 MA on the daily time frame. If it actually does get support and bounce from here, I would expect price action on Bitcoin market to be running within a falling wedge pattern. It's not yet validated, but this is my estimation. So I do expect a bounce from here. I will cover this again tomorrow and see if I am right or wrong. Okay. If price action actually breaches the daily 50 MA, let me take a look at what's actually next. 
uh, possibly will be looking at the three day 21 MA rate here, currently about 26K. If price action does not actually bounce at the daily 50 MA, I do think it's going to bounce more likely. And I do think when it actually bounces here, the market would actually go up with it. That's just my prediction. I would visit this again tomorrow and see if I am right or wrong. Let's take a look into DOT. Let me also give my very quick price prediction here if I am right. If I am right here that the daily 50 MA does bounce, does actually hold up the price action, like I said, I do think this is going to become a falling wedge pattern. In that case, if this pattern is validated, then it will be a 68% chance of it breaking upwards. If it actually breaks upwards, depending on when, when it would actually break upwards, okay, let's just say by February 8th, okay, just for convenience sake, then I will have a measured target of about 42K. Like I said, I will re revisit this tomorrow and see where we are going to be at in terms of the Bitcoin price action and the altcoin price action. Now let's go into DOT and see what exactly is going on in here. This coin is pretty new and it has been accepted for the past couple of months in August here. Okay. So right now it has been running quite a bit on the weekly time frame right now. I see the RSI about 78, so still pretty overbought. On the three-day time frame, I see bearish divergence right here, comparing this high with this high, but with just a uh, equal high on the RSI that is still classic bearish divergence. When I do see bearish divergence on a specific time frame, my conservative estimate would be that the price action would actually come down to meet the next closest moving average. However, this 21MA would be the next closest moving average that is very far down. Would the price action actually come all the way back down to about slightly under $8 to actually meet this moving average. We will see if the price action, if the bulls are actually strong enough in this market, then I would say not. So there's going to be two other possible scenarios. Would the price action actually takes off without it, if the bulls are actually that strong in this market? Or even if the bulls are not strong enough to actually take off without it, would it actually be able to just hold this price up, consolidate, not consolidate without a significant drop and wait for the 21 MA to actually come back up and meet the price action instead of dropping all the way down to meet it. That's also a possible scenario. And of course, obviously, if the bulls are not strong enough, then I would expect the price action to come all the way back down to meet the 21 MA. So those three scenarios for this bearish divergence scenario, um, I would take those into consideration. Now let's take a look into the daily time frame where I do still see uh, there was still possible bearish divergence right here, comparing these two highs with the lower high on the RSI. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at. The daily 21MA is about $12. And same concept of what I just said about the three-day time frame would apply here. Now let's take a look into the 12-hour time frame. I do see a possible symmetrical triangle pattern that could be forming here. Just depending on the where the second swing actually um, actually lands, I would say it would probably land on the 12 hour 21 MA because there was still, po um, let me see. I, th I think there is still possible bearish divergence right here. It's pretty similar tops. So I would read that as bearish divergence on the 12 hour time frame as well. And in this case, I don't think it would be too crazy to assume that the price action will actually come down a little bit or just wait for the 12 hour 21 MA to actually support the price action for a little bit, okay? Now this is my prediction only, symmetrical triangle pattern. Let's see if this actually holds. If it actually does hold, then my price prediction here, if it actually breaks out by January 28th, which is the apex of this symmetrical triangle pattern that has yet to be validated, okay? I'm still waiting for the second swing down. Let's see where the second swing down actually lands and bounces before me actually making that assumption. But if the symmetrical triangle pattern does become true, then I do have a measured target of about slightly under $22. Let's 
symmetrical, symmetrical triangle patterns are continuation patterns. 60% chance of it breaking upwards in this case. Verify that stat on your own. So this is what I'm looking at. Now let's take a look into the bullish and bearish case scenarios. 12 hour time frame is my focus right now because the price action still has not yet touched the 21 MA on the 12 hour time frame. So this is the bullish case scenario. Bullish case scenario here, price action breaks above this upper trend line, either with or without touching the 12 hour 21 MA. Okay. Then I would have measure target of about, like I said, $22. If it actually does touch uh, the 21 MA, I do still think that the symmetrical triangle pattern will stay intact. So it looks something more like this. Right now, if I do want to make a smaller symmetrical triangle pattern, it could probably look something more like this. But I don't think that's going to change uh, the... That could change, actually. That would put the price action, the measure target, something up like this. So I will have a measure target here of about still $22. So just depending on where uh, the second swing lands, if actually uh, if we actually assume it to have landed already, then I would have a measure target of about still about $22, but the breakout date would be sooner. Uh, uh, just assuming where the apex is right now uh, would be about January 25th instead of I think 28th of what I just said for the, for the bigger symmetrical triangle pattern. So this is what I'm looking for, and that is the bullish case scenario. If the price action actually breaks out of this symmetrical triangle pattern and the top trend line, the measure target will be still about $22. Measure targets are theoretical targets only, may or may not be reached. It could also be overreached. I will strategize accordingly if I was in the position. Bearish case scenario here, if the price action breaks below this bottom trend line right here, the next level of support I'm looking at will be the 12 hour 21 MA, which is still fast, fast approaching. Even if actually it breaks this bottom trend line right here, I do still think the symmetrical triangle pattern will stay intact. If the 12 hour 21 MA does not actually hold, then I'm still looking for the next key level of support will be the 21 MA on the daily time frame. Of course, I still will have to take into consideration of Bitcoin price action. If Bitcoin price action continues to dump, that would affect the altcoin markets. The magnitude would depend on if Bitcoin dominance is trending upwards or downwards. Now these are my bullish and bearish case uh, scenarios for DOT. Let's right now take it into Chainlink. On Chainlink here, let me take a look from uh, the higher time frames. What do you still see possible? Well, uh, this monthly candle does not close in 10 days, so I'm not gonna take this into consideration just yet. Otherwise, if it actually closes, something like this, then there is bearish divergence on the monthly time frame. So if it actually does make a pretty significant move to meet uh, to beat the last RSI reading here of about 79 on the monthly time frame, then this bearish divergence, possible bearish divergence could be negated. On the weekly time frame, there is already bearish divergence comparing this high with this high. However, lower highs on the RSI so something I'll be cautious of because, like I said, if I do see specific, if I do see bearish divergence on a specific time frame, I would assume conservatively that it will come down to meet the next closest moving average. In this case, would be the weekly 21, currently at about $13. So I'll be a little cautious of that. On the three-day time frame, technically no. Actually, there is. I will be comparing this high with this high. So there still is. Even though comparing this high with this high, there was not. But I would still need to compare this high with this high. So there is still bearish divergence on the three day time frame as well. On the daily time frame, let's see. There still is. I'll be comparing this one with this one right here. However, with lower highs on the RSI. So coming back down to the daily 21 MA is not unreasonable in this case. Now let's take a look into the 12 hour time frame and see what exactly could be going on. So on the 12 hour time frame, this seems more like a head and shoulders pattern, which is a bearish pattern. The neckline of this pattern is going to be, it's going to be right here where I can actually get the most consensus of candle touches about $19.40. 
measure target of this head and shoulders pattern would be about $15.20, okay, $15.25. That's what I'm looking at. Now, let's take a look into the bullish and bearish case scenarios right now because it could be playing out right now. Bullish case scenario here, if price action actually gets a bounce from this 12-hour 21MA, and actually to invalidate this head and shoulders pattern, I would like to see a candle close on the 12 hour at about the $23.25 level, which is parallel with the last head level right here on the 12 hour time frame. This tells me this head and shoulders pattern would be invalidated. That's the bullish case scenario. Bearish case scenario looks like it could be playing out right now. If price action, Price action has already broken below this neckline right here and does not look like it's going to get supported right now. But to further confirm this, if price action actually closes on the 12 hour time frame, which it does in about the next almost two hours, close below the 21 MA right here, this tells me that the support is broken. Okay, the next level of support I'm looking at would be the daily 21 MA which is about $17 right now, okay? The measure target, which is about $15.25, may or may not be reached, could also be overreached. So there's gonna be quite a bit of uh, support between the break, the neckline right here and the measure target, including the fifth level about $15.60, the daily 21 at about $17 right now, and the 12 hour 50 at about $16 right now. Now, these are my bullish and bearish case scenarios for today for DOT and Chainlink. Let me know if you guys found it helpful. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Let me know agreements, disagreements, feedback. I would love to hear them. Hope you manage your risk carefully. And if you would like to see any more of my most recently uploaded videos on YouTube, you guys can check out my links up here on YouTube. See you next time.